folks, and thanks again for tuning in right here on Hook, Line, and Singer. Today, I am back in my kitchen. We're going to be baking a homemade egg custard pie. Homemade meaning a homemade pie crust, using a fresh, flaky, wonderful pie crust uh, and that creamy, custardy goodness uh, that you get with an egg custard. Mm, one of my favorite desserts on the planet is a wonderful egg custard pie. Hey, hey stick around, and I'll show you how I do it. Just some free uh, medical advice for y'all. If you're battling the sinus crud, especially if you are a singer, speaker, something of that nature, uh, anything that's that has a D in it, like Claritin D, Allegra D, Aleve D, Sudafed, they have uh, they have something in them. It's whatever they use to make meth, because you have to show your ID to buy that. But whatever that is will dry you out. And when you go to speak or sing, your mouth will just be cotton. But this will not, this will, this will dry up some of that drainage and such and make you feel so much better uh, without drying you out. This has been one of my best friends uh, in singing for many years because I battle allergies, especially fall allergies and ragweed. Been outdoors a lot lately and it's caught up with me. I'm coughing up the old, well, I'll spare you the details, but this is gold right here. I think the name of this is Alka-Seltzer Cold and Flu or Cold and Sinus or something like that. Uh, this is the generic brand, I think, from Walmart. You can get a giant box. It's pretty cheap, too. You just drop two tablets in a glass of water, uh, real cold water, and it tastes pretty good, actually, just like a Sprite. Just, just down it, and you will feel better for several hours. Take my word for it. I've tried it all. I actually put mine in a bottle of water to break them in half like that. Drop them in. Let them do their fizzy. See the fizzy magic? Oh yes. Relief is on the way. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need. Two and a half cups of flour. Now, let me stop right here. Flour and self-rising flour, that's kinda like when the preacher says John or First John. Uh, if somebody just says flour, that means all purpose when you're trying to follow recipes. Uh, so if, if it calls for self-rising flour, They'll normally say self-rising flour. If the preacher says, open your Bibles to, to John chapter 3, he's talking about the St. John, the gospel of St. John. All right? Otherwise, he'll say 1 John, 2 John, 3rd, you know. So, <laughs> remember that. Flour, all-purpose flour. Uh, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, two sticks of butter, three quarter cups of ice water. And we're gonna take just one teaspoon of lemon juice out of there. You'll also need a nice pie plate. I think we actually got this for a wedding gift. Oh, 23 years ago, almost 23 and a half. Let's use it. And you see, I also have some cooking spray that I'm gonna spray in that pie plate to keep our wonderful crust from sticking. The most important thing you want to do is create you a nice, spacious, clean working area to make your flour. And uh, so that's what I've done here. I've cleaned the bar off in our kitchen. I need a lot of room, if y'all remember that from my, from my biscuit video. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've got this nice and, and, and cleaned off and wiped down and let it dry good. And now we're ready to go. You'll also find it helpful if you have a whisk, a rolling pin, and what is called a pastry cutter. Uh, you've seen that contraption used when I made the homemade biscuits. That's what you use to cut the fat into uh, the dry mixture. So the first step for this pie crust is we're gonna combine all of our dry ingredients. I have two and a half cups of flour. Again, that's all-purpose flour. I have one teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. I'll just dump those in. 
and you're going to want to whisk those dry ingredients together. I've had my butter chilling uh, in the freezer, actually on the ice, and you're going to take that chilled butter and begin to cut it in to your dry mixture. At this point, you just need one stick of your butter, and we're going to cut it in to this dry mixture uh, really, really fine. Tell us about the consistency of coarse meal. Whoa. I'm going to need a bigger bowl. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Well, we've had some beautiful fall weather this week. A couple days we had highs. Didn't get much warmer than around 70 degrees and lows at night in the lower to mid 40s. Oh, it was beautiful. The last couple of days have been warmer. We've got a chance of uh, rain today. Maybe even a chance of a little severe weather. By the way, I saw this morning our local celebrity weather guru, James Spann, put a post on Facebook reminding everybody, well, it was a map, making sure that everybody knew how to identify their county on a map, and surely everybody can do that, but well, you would think, but everybody can't do that, so James Spann is all about saving lives, so he was posting that map for people's information, telling them to be sure that they always knew where their county was on the map so that when they watch the news and these severe weather uh, bulletins come in, they can know when a storm is heading their way. And he said that tornado season was about to start. Tornado season um, goes from November, I think it was, until May. So a lot of people don't think about tornado season being in the cooler months, but it definitely is. I remember uh, one really bad tornado we had in Tuscaloosa. I think that was December of 01. Anyway, my wife and I were in Tuscaloosa shopping and it came a tornado and we were hunkered down in the mall uh, safe room with I don't know how many other hundred people. And that tornado actually uh, hit uh, destroyed a lot of homes south of town on Highway 69 South and actually took, I believe it was six lives. So, uh, But we left the house that morning to go Christmas shopping in December and it was about 75 degrees. So that's always a good indicator to look out. All right, so we've got this, uh, we've got the butter cut up in this just about as fine as we can get it. And on the next stick of butter, you don't want to get it cut up near as fine uh, because you actually want it about pea size. The pieces to be about pea size. And as I do this here, it's really hard to differentiate the butter from the flour. So that's what you want at this stage. So let's get our other stick of butter and get it cut into this flour as well. I'm actually going to slice this up into little pats, make it a lot easier to manage because that butter's been in the freezer and gotten, gotten pretty hard. Dump that in there and repeat that process. But again, you just don't want to get this quite as finely cut as the last. I hear Bella. Hey, baby. Okay, I think that is looking good in my estimation. So the next thing we want to do is add some ice water. And I'm going to take our three quarter cups of water and add about a teaspoon of lemon juice to it. We're going to put about two thirds of this in the mixture and begin to mix that up. The reason you want to use ice water is because you don't want anything that's going to, going to cause your butter that's in this flour to start melting. You can see that's still really dry. Let's 
put the rest of that water in here. This dough is not going to be uh, very liquidy. It's, it's, it's going to be pretty, pretty dry. You should be able to um, shape it without it crumbling. That's the consistency that you're going for. It's going to be drier than, say, biscuit dough would be. All right, that feels right. Now let's prepare our surface here for this to be rolled out. So for that, we're going to get some flour and just sprinkle some flour on a good, clean, dry surface. You also want to coat your coat your rolling pin so that it doesn't stick flour on your hand and get it out of the bowl. This is a little bit crumbly. I may have to add a little, I'm gonna have to add a little water to that. So let's add a little bit more water. Let's see if we can't get this to just the right consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe that's gonna do it. Okay, I think that is about just right. You can see it's, it's easy to handle now. It's not wet, but it's not falling apart. Now, we want to refrigerate this. We want to let this chill for about 30 minutes. All right, so we've chilled this down for a little while and we're gonna take it out of here. Um, now this, this would be enough for a pie crust and probably uh, plenty of coating for a pie, uh, for like a, a cobbler type pie or something where you would put, so I'm gonna pinch about I don't know, about a third of this off and see if that won't be enough for us to make a good pie crust right here. Maybe a little more. I'm gonna shape it into a ball with my hands like this and then put it down here, flatten it out. You wanna, you wanna keep it as round as you can. Take your rolling pin and you want to get this to about an eighth of an inch. I don't know, you you bought pie crust. You you want to get it about as as thick and as thin as a pie crust needs to be. No right or wrong really. You want to make sure it's not sticking to your roller because the thinner you get it, the harder it will be to manage. This rolling pin, by the way, is courtesy of a good preacher friend of mine up around Lawrenceburg, Kentucky area, actually Junction, Junction City, Kentucky. Brother Curtis Brock, Pastor's Mount Freeman Baptist Church up there, and we always have a great time with him. I think I have this big enough Lay whatever you're going to put it in on there, like so. Take your knife, flour, and, and cut it all an inch or two bigger than the, than the area, than the plate you're putting it in, the pie plate. All right, we're gonna keep that. 
Now we want to roll this pie crust up. We want to just roll, roll this up. It's kind of as tight as you can. All right, go ahead and spray our pie pan with a little, little cooking spray. Now we're going to take that crust and just roll it right back out onto our pie pan. Just like that. You want to press it to the sides. All right, that extra crust I had, I got some, I got some imperfections right here. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat a little bit. Just put that right there. Tricks of the trade. Now, you just want to take your knife. Go around the edges and cut the extra off. You want to take a fork now. Do that right there. This one. Hmm. It's ready. This is going to go into the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. All right, I've actually taken this, this crust out a little bit early. It's just, it's starting to firm up good. Uh, for this particular pie, you don't want to get the crust really brown at this point. All right, so uh, just the edges are starting to brown. And so we're gonna pour our egg custard filling into this and bake it again for another 30, 40 minutes. So uh, you don't want it to get too brown. In fact, we may have to still uh, put some foil or something around the edges to keep that crust from burning. But let's just let's see what happens. I've got another crust ready to go in the oven. Uh, what I didn't do on that other one is another good tip uh, because I noticed it bubbling up just a little bit. You may want to take your fork and just poke a couple of holes in the bottom of it. That'll usually prevent those uh, bubbles from coming up. And instead of a fork, I just took uh, my thumb and pressed around the edges of that one just to give it a little bit different different look. That also helps to seal that so that when the crust begins to cook, it doesn't shrink as bad and move toward the center of the pie plate. That's not only uh, for looks or aesthetics, it's also very functional to create either with a fork or your, or your thumb, uh, just press that to the edge of your pie pan. And now we move on to the next part of this sugary, gooey, delicious egg custard pie. Oh, by the way, this is my wife's favorite pie, and mine too. So, fellas, keep mama happy. Everybody's happy. Always important in baking is letting anything that you're gonna use um, that's been refrigerated, let it sit out until it gets room temperature. We're gonna mix all these ingredients in the blender here. Stay tuned. First step is gonna to be to measure out six tablespoons of butter. And you know, butter comes wrapped in these little deals here and you just open it without moving it and six. That seems simple enough, but it took me a while to figure out. And I'm gonna melt this in a glass in the microwave. That's gonna be for one pie, six tablespoons. Voila. All right, we're gonna use one half cup of self-rising flour. I'm just going to use the scoop that we keep in there. 
one cup of sugar. That's one and a half cup of Splenda. I found that the pies turn out a little bit smoother. Uh, Splenda has the same volume consistency as sugar. So my recipe originally called for one and a half cups of sugar. So instead of that, I use one cup of sugar and a half a cup of Splenda. And I found that that makes it just a little bit smoother and obviously also a little bit more healthy for you. The next piece of the puzzle is five large eggs. Oh, wow, that's like some sorcery right there, ain't it? <laughs> Into the mixer. Next ingredient, two cups of whole milk. Or in my case, since I didn't have whole milk, 1% milk. I've got four cups in here, so I've got to pour it out until I have two. There we go. Right, I'm going to go ahead and give that a pulse or two. Plug it up. It works so much better. Right now, I'm going to add my melted butter and about a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract. I say about. Yeah, about like that. All right, give that a good. And there we have it. That's all there is to egg custard, folks. I'm just going to pour that in the shell, and then I'm going to sprinkle some ground nutmeg on the top of it. Now here's one more tip. If you fear that you're not going to be able to get that from wherever you're pouring it in into the stove, just leave a little space and go ahead and slide it into the stove. You want to bake these pies at 350. So you can go ahead and sprinkle your nutmeg on the top and then just pour into one edge of it. That nutmeg makes this so good and smells good when you're cooking them. Mm. Just a good, nice sprinkle coating on top, right? That right there. And I've transferred that to my oven and I've just got it kind of on the edge and I'm just going to fill that crust the rest of the way up. Just as full as I can get it without it running over. All right, that's almost level there. That ought to be perfect. Touch up that one little spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. All right, you want this to bake for 30 to 40 minutes. It's gonna start rising up, especially around the edges. You wanna bake it until the center is no longer liquid. Here's a tasty twist on traditional egg custard. Add one quarter cup of Hershey's cocoa. So I've got everything else in there. And let's just blend it up. If you choose to make this one, the only difference between it and the regular egg custard is don't put the nutmeg on top. Chocolate and nutmeg don't really go together. Well, this is still a little warm, but I'm going to go ahead and cut into it and see what we've got here. The crust is on point. Oh, look there. Smoke rising. Let's just see if that's what you want right there. It's cooked through and through. It's not liquidy. Hmm. 
hot. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. When that gets good and ice cold, you talk about good. Sit down with a glass of milk and some delicious egg custard pie. One of my favorite things in the world. You know, food has to be uh, real high on the list of guilty pleasures. I've often wondered, will there be food in heaven? Well, we know about the marriage supper of the Lamb. I believe that's when Jesus returns or his church gathers us all uh, together so that we can go and dwell uh, in the New Jerusalem uh, for eternity. And it's referred to as the marriage supper of the Lamb, which leads me to believe it'll be like a great big celebration. You know, we have homecomings and dinner on the ground uh, down here. Uh, can you imagine the marriage supper of the Lamb? I wonder if egg custard will be there. Revelation 19 and 9 says, And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. I know there will not be any thirst or there won't be any hunger in heaven. We also find that in God's word. But maybe eating wonderful things like egg custard for uh, just for our pleasure I like to think that maybe so, maybe so. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Hey, speaking of, I hope and pray that you know that that's where you're going. If not, uh, I'd love to share with you how that you can know that heaven is your eternal home. Get in touch with me today if you don't know that for sure, because I want to see you there. Whether we're cooking or not, I promise you it'll be grand and it'll be forever. Hey, as always, thanks so much for tuning into this video. I hope uh, you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll try this pie. Oh, also remember, if you want to, the most difficult part of what I've done today is the crust, uh, no doubt. That may take you a couple times uh, to master. As you saw, it takes me always, it usually takes me a couple times to master. But it's not that difficult. But this pie is super easy and quick and simple if you just buy those Het Ritz deep dish uh, frozen pie crust. They work great, they work great. Or you can cook this pie uh, without a crust. Uh, the flour in there will kind of make its own crust and it's I've, I've done it like that and it's really uh, very good that way. But if you like a crust, a good flaky buttery crust like I do, you want to cook it in a pie crust, either frozen or uh, made uh, by scratch like I showed you here in this video. But anyway, I hope if you'll try this, uh, you'll leave me your comments. Maybe, uh, maybe leave me a comment about your favorite egg custard. Do you like egg custard? Some people don't like egg custard. They don't like the texture. I love the texture. That's one of my favorite things about it. But maybe uh, your grandmother made the uh, best egg custard that you've ever had. Maybe you can tell us about that. Describe it to us. Also, I'll be uh, listing all the ingredients uh, that we've done here today in the uh, information uh, for this for this video. You can click on the arrow, pull down arrow above and find that. I hope you'll like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. That way you'll never miss a video like this or fishing or anything else that I do. And you can leave me your comments. I appreciate you guys more than you know. May the good Lord bless you. Until next time, whatever we're doing, remember, God loves you and so do I. Bye.